Hi, Hank Lassum here again, and I love my old computers. The Commodore 64, the Amiga, and the 486 all have their specific place and time they remind me of. And something that really highlights their difference is what they sound like. They're not similar at all. They have a very distinct, unique sound to them, and I was curious to learn more. I did some research, and I didn't dig into all of the details, but I was trying to learn a bit more about the fundamental differences between them. The Commodore 64 was released in 1982, so I will start here. The sound comes from the SID chip. The SID is a synthesizer, with three channels. Within each channel it can produce different waveforms. Square wave, sawtooth, triangle and noise. So you could have a square wave, and then add a drum, which noise could be used for, and immediately go back to a square wave, then you didn't need to use only drums on one channel. And that would free up a channel, so that it would sound like you have four separate channels, instead of only three. This is unlike the NES, which has five voices, but each channel can only produce one type of sound. The NES does however allow for samples on one of the channels. Samples are recorded sound, for example a speech. But it wasn't used as much, because it takes up a lot of space. It is possible to play samples on the Commodore 64 with some clever programming, taking advantage of a bug, but it is easier with the older 6581 than with the newer 8580. So the Commodore 64 produces a few different types of sounds or waveforms, but it also has some filters to alter the sound even further. So for example the square wave can turn into something like this. This is not the same as FM like the OPL chip from Yamaha that I will talk about later. The Amiga was launched in 1985 with the Polar sound chip. This is the Amiga 500 Plus, released in 1991, but it has the same sound chip. The Polar chip is not a synthesizer. It doesn't generate music, but rather it plays back 8-bit samples, and it has 4 channels. Samples are recorded sound, so in general it sounds a lot better than the Commodore 64, since it plays back sound from instruments that are too complicated to replicate with the SID chip. But I think the Commodore 64 can sound a bit more clean. But then again, even the first Amiga with its Polar chip could play back 14-bit sound at 28 kHz, and even higher sampling rate with the later ECS or the AGA chipsets. But I'm not sure if anyone did that back in the day, or if it was only discovered recently. But search for Amiga 14-bit music, I was blown away with the quality that is possible on an Amiga. In 1992, two sound cards were released, the Gravis Ultrasound and the Sound Blaster 16, and I have both of them installed in my 486. The Sound Blaster has an OPL3 chip from Yamaha, and that's the type of sound that reminds me of my 486. The OPL2 chip was used in the first sound card for PC called Adlib. All of the OPL chips are FM synthesizers, so it's generating the sound like the Commodore 64, but not in the same way. It produces a waveform, and to get a different sound it uses another waveform of different kinds to manipulate it. And that waveform can also be manipulated by yet another waveform. The OPL2 has 9 channels, and the OPL3 has 18. And my favorite music for the OPL chip is from Wacky Wheels.
Unlike the Outlip that only has FM synthesis, the Sound Blaster 16 can play back 16-bit 44kHz samples in two-channel stereo. But it's more interesting to look at the Gravis ultrasound when it comes to playing back samples. The Gravis Ultrasound can play back 14 channels at 16-bit and 44kHz, or up to 32 channels at 19kHz. This is mixed in hardware on the sound card, so it offloads the CPU. The GUS, or the Ultrasound, can also be upgraded to 1MB of RAM where you can load in samples. Doom, for example, has its own set of samples it loads into the RAM on the card. So the Ultrasound can play back samples from the RAM, like Polar Chip on the Amiga, but with higher quality and more channels. If you are wondering about MIDI, that is also recorded sound like samples. MIDI is basically a communication standard between devices. I don't have the Roland MP32, but that has samples or recorded sound from the instruments for the attack. That is the start of the sound, and it is synthesizing the rest, the sustain. And at the end I want to talk about the PC speaker. Immediately don't think it's interesting at all. Normally it plays one bit square away, and it is just making some simple tone in different frequencies. So I got this 286 a while back, and it doesn't have a sound card. And then I started this game. I was blown away. How is this possible? Does it have a sound card after all? But no, it doesn't. So the PC speaker itself has two positions, in or out, and it moves from one to the next and back. This is one bit of data, zero or one. How fast this happens, as in the frequency, is programmed by the user, and we get sounds of different frequencies. This requires very little use of the CPU. To play something more complex, the speaker needs more positions. 256 positions gives us 8 bit but the PC speaker only moves between two positions. So how can we get more positions out of it? The speaker uses 60 microseconds to go from 0 to 1. But what if we tell it to go back to position 0 after perhaps 30 microseconds? The speaker will stop at a different position. So this way we can get more positions, or bits, and more comprehensive music can be played. However, this uses more of the CPU and old computers didn't have very fast CPUs. This technique is called PWM, or Pulse Width Modulation, and it becomes a crude digital to analog converter, or DAC. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you did enjoy. I'm sorry my English does not seem to improve, I don't know why, but that's just how it is. And I try to keep it simple, even though it's a lot more, a lot more you can learn about uh, frequency modulation and the SID chip and the MIGA and all of the filters and so on. But now I have at least learned about the fundamental differences between each of them, and I hope you have learned something also. And yeah, I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.